guys. So, we decided we wanted to look at the Rocket Mass heater on the inside and see what it was doing. We wanted to see how the heat riser looked, how everything was working. So, last night I let the fire go out. And um, because of that this morning, the cabin, while warm when we got up, it is now quite a bit chillier. It's been um, about four hours since we woke up. So I decided rather than having the kids in a cold cabin, I took them to their grannies. I showered, I came back, and now we're waiting to do not an autopsy, but exploratory surgery on the rocket mass heater. Super excited to do it. Okay guys, so we've had a week with the rocket stove. The rocket mass heater, you can see, I don't know, maybe they can see, there is a mass in it now. And now we're going to do a little bit of exploratory surgery. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an autopsy on it and take it apart and see what went on inside. Awesome. All right, Honeydew Carpenter, make sure to go check out their YouTube channel. Yeah, now, look, look at the stove, it's so pretty. It is no. so pretty. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Yeah. So we're super, I'm super excited to see what the heat riser looks like, personally. <laughs> just to be like, look at yeah. me like, oh, it held. Yeah, me too, so, all right. All right. I cooked kimchi, don't you look, love the smell at, of kimchi? Look at the root. <laughs> We've been collecting a special concoction underneath that pipe. So Darwin thinks that because it's a single wall pipe, it's just tin, that what's happening is is that it's cooling too much as it comes out. Yeah, I, I believe that, that, well, the air forcing up the insulated riser is creating a positive pressure in here. Hot air doesn't want to go down, but it, because of the positive pressure, it forces it down. And then by the time it gets over here, because there's no insulation here, none on this, and it's cold outside, and the mass is absorbing all the energy of the heat. It doesn't get really hot. The cold air outside wants to push down, and the warm air up in here wants to create a positive pressure in here, and it just kind of fights against each other. So this has got to be, we got to insulate this, I think, going up and out. That's my... That's a fair bit. Okay, we got some ash coming in. But nothing, look, look at that. Yeah, that it's not that much. That. Oh, there's a lot of ash in the bottom, though. Oh, is I there? bet from all, look, it, it's all that paper I was telling you about. Oh. It went right up. The paper flewed up. Yeah, and it then, did. Is that what plugged it? I think that's what, remember when I said, did yeah. I say last night? I'm like, I saw a whole bunch of paper just look like it gets sucked up the tube. Yeah, and look, there's the paper, and... Yeah, there's a ton in there. There's like a good four inches in loft. That is what was causing it to yeah. back up. You know, and what I originally was going to do, you know these round leaves? Uh-huh. I was going to put a hinge on the back one. I wish I had of now. Put a hinge on the back one and a pin. That way we could just drop it out and all the mass would just run out. Right. <laughs> that would have been cool. No, I'm going to take it apart. You want to take it apart? Yeah, let's just okay. do an autopsy real quick. All right. Not, don't call it an autopsy. It's an exploratory surgery. An exploratory Ox surgery. Autopsy, it's dead. Oh, it's <laughs> not dead. This thing works great. <laughs> Did we did we want to address the ugly paint on the front? My nose hairs. Stay away. Um, oh, the ugly paint on the front. Yeah, Julie decided she no. <laughs> she was um, testing it actually, out to full limit. Uh, thank you. Oh, gosh, I can't remember the guy. He told me. Uh, Use the white high heat paint. No, he told me a solution to put on the steel that preps it so that the paint will stick to it better. Really? Yeah. Um, all I did was, uh, he saw the video where I was wire brushing it all. Yeah. And uh, he gave me an idea about that, and he's absolutely right. 
uh, if you, you know, put the rust removing solution on there. I brought everything, all the perlite and everything to make the final mix. So it's going to be insulated back to here and I think that'll help things too a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I wish I had left this a couple inches longer, but it doesn't matter. It's neither here nor there. Sweetie, get out there and start making some water glass, okay? <laughs> I do need to do it. Yeah. When I record you. Should I hold it or I'm trying to figure out if I hold the door or if I yeah. hold Ah! Oh, 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 oh what happened? I said her! I just said that. So the only reason we're having to reapply the water glass is because the caulk actually broke off chunks because it was so concrete that it broke a little bit, bit off the edge of the riser. Right. It's not because there was anything wrong with the blend to begin with. It's just that it physically broke it off when we tried to disconnect it. Okay. So I, I broke my own heat riser. I dropped it. It was working perfectly well. We had the water glass in it. We had the Portland cement about to be put on when I picked it up and the caulking gave way. <laughs> so we're going to have Mel show what we have to, are having to use as a, as a replacement because we have to get the stove in and Darwin's going to use a new mix. 50 to 54 pounds a piece. Yep. And so how many times heavier is it than my whole heat riser? Oh gosh. Your whole heat riser only weighed maybe eight, nine pounds. That weighs 208 pounds, so it's 200 pounds more than your heat riser. Yeah. So why? I don't know. I already tried to lift it. It was so heavy. That's, There's the other mix. Yeah, this is the refractory mix that I'm putting in the last three inches of the nose you of her want stove. The stove right out and here. that's that's how it's supposed to look, kind of like wet sand when you when you put pressure on it. It's supposed to do it's like that. You're gonna have to help me balance it. I'm gonna tip it back on this. Uh, yeah, very good. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Do you want me to stir it? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you have gloves on. Okay. I'm going to go help him. Okay. And be careful of having it fall on me. I, I want to do one layer so they're the same. Yeah. And then pack it and then. Okay. Yeah, we're losing light. I have that ammonia. I gotta make sure that we have a good seal. 
So we're going to test a regular fire brick and see if it draws as well as your uh, foam mate. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, so this is my studio this morning. We worked on the bench yesterday and the day before. This is what it looks like right now, and this is how I'm keeping warm in the meantime. I need to get a video up, but I wanted to show you kind of what was going on. Um, if you watched the video yesterday, um, you saw that we got it in, but we are thinking we're going to reroute it out back out through the wall because we're having too hard of a time getting it to suck down into that's a pretty that's a pretty big drop down into that bench so we're gonna work on it a little bit more today when Darwin is done with work he does have a full-time job um, but we are not super thrilled with the conventional heat riser we're using what happened was we pulled it out the one that Darwin made the heat the refractory mix from the foam mate we pulled it out and the cement between the layers uh, on one part on the, where it met the base of the stove the concrete cement that we used um, held on and so it wasn't the heat that damaged the heat riser it was the concrete that we had attached it with and you'll see we had to use a pry bar in order to get it out so it pulled some of the refractory mix out and um, what happened was is that I was putting water glass on the exposed part and we were just going to match it up put some more concrete down and put it back on and we'd been picking it up all day in different ways, but when I picked it up straight from the top, so this is what happened to the refractory uh, riser, the heat riser, after I dropped it. So that's why we have the conventional one in is because we do need heat while we're waiting for Darwin to put together the next refractory mix. Um, he was going to try embedding the perlite in water glass to see if he liked it better or if he wanted to do it the way he had before. So in the meantime, we have fire bricks in here just so that we can test the way that it pulls into the bench. So it's all very experimental. And I was so devastated when I dropped that thing. We were trying to just test certain parameters, not, not, have, to, not have to rebuild anything. So that was my bad. Um, but it burned well for a week and um, it got really hot in here. We had to leave this door open into the greenhouse. So the greenhouse was always warm. It was like just another part of the house. I had windows open at certain parts of the day. The big thing that I learned about rocket mass heaters is they don't want damped down. Anytime I tried to damp down the flame, the fire, the stove, um, how, how shall I put this? So if I kept it on and functioning as it's supposed to with full air, it burned and it did a good job. And because we had pea gravel in here as the um, as the mass, this didn't get cherry red. All the excess heat that was way too hot went into the pea gravel into the mass. And so the first two days that I used it, we didn't have the mass in and it got cherry red when we burned it because it was super efficient. But then when we put the pea gravel in here, that red went away. It was still really hot up here, like between seven and 900 degrees in just here. Um, so super hot. Um, actually, I think I'm not sure that we ever tested when it was cherry hot. When it was working with the pea gravel in it, it would be between seven and nine hundred degrees. But we never—I don't think we ever actually used the heat gun on it when it was cherry red. Um, so what we found was that if we if if I close it down, if it had a really good bed of coals in it and it had a, a one new log in it and I closed it down not all the way but leaving just a little bit of air then we would still have coals in the morning it was easy to restart um, 
but right now what we're working on is being able to start it quickly and um, with it attached to the bin. The one thing is is that with the testing there can be a lot of smoke while you're figuring out how it wants to draw and so while we're doing any more of the testing especially at night the kids aren't going to be here and we're not going to be sleeping in the cabin. We'll be um, at my mom's and I will be here most of the time when the kids are in school uh, just with my little propane heater while we're trying to play with all the variations that we're trying to play with which we're, we're working with too many variations right, right now that's part of the problem. Um, so we can't, we're, we, and the only reason we're doing it that way is because we're limited on time. I'm still trying to get out here by, out of here by Thanksgiving and which leaves me one week, one week to get this put in and really do a hard test week on it, but we don't have all the parts put together yet. So what might end up happening is, um, in this small of a space, I think you really have to have a big mass because you want to light it once or twice a day and then let the mass heat you. Um, it's too small of a space for, at least for this size of a stove, because if it's burning the way it's supposed to, it gets really, really hot in here. That being said, we haven't had our extreme temperatures, so if we were down to, you know, negative 30 Fahrenheit, it might be that we'd want that kind of intense heat. So as you can see, what we really need to do is more testing. Um, and I'm not going to be here this winter to do all the testing, so what we might do is have it go back to Darwin's. He has that shed out back where at certain temperatures, if the temperatures dropped really low outside, he could test it inside his small shed and see um, if it was the perfect amount of heat when you get really, really hot or when you get really, really cold outside. So that might be what happens um, uh, because in Oklahoma, the house that we're going to is as small as this house. If you include the square footage of the loft, they're the same size. Um, and so the little cottage in Oklahoma is the same size and so without a mass I think that this one would still put out way too much heat. It wants a house about three times this big at least. Um, which is why again the mass is perfect if you have a tiny house. You can fill it up um, let, and then uh, you can fire it up, let it go, heat up the mass and let, then let it heat the house the rest of the day. That is what a rocket mass heater is supposed to do. It's not supposed to burn all day. It's supposed to just burn occasionally. So I'm going to sit here and edit for a little bit. And then tonight Darwin and Melanie are coming back out. We're going to play with it some more. And then um, if it's working perfectly, I'll probably um, still sleep at my mom's tonight and then come play with it again tomorrow. Just because once again, I don't want the girls in the house. If it was to have a problem, and like for instance, uh, Darwin double wall piped the chimney now. So it's double wall piped so that you don't have that cold air coming down the chimney while the warm air is trying to keep, to go up. So he double walled the chimney and um, I'm not worried about the stove smoking as much as I am about the bench smoking. So what happened yesterday was that the, the joints, let's see if I can show you, the joints in the bench started smoking because we were trying to force that smoke down and the stove was not hot enough and it wasn't drawing strongly enough yet it, to be able to force the smoke out. By the time we had been burning it for an hour, it was. The, the joints were not smoking anymore. Um, the stove was burning hot, but we were starting to get some condensation on the inside of the pipes that was dripping out onto the floor, which is what we'd had the other day when we felt like um, some paper had been sucked up the J-tube into the heat riser. We felt like I had seen some paper get sucked up um, and so I felt like maybe there was a blockage there, which when we opened it, it turned out there was. And so in the future, I don't think I want to use paper. That suction there at that J-tube is so strong. It really does just suck things up into it. And so if you're using something that's really light and fluffy to start your fire, then the likelihood of it getting sucked up and then turning into ash in there is pretty high. So um, uh, I will be excited. Uh, Darwin's working on plans for a special fire starter and a press that you can use with wax and sawdust that he'll have in his plans on his Etsy store soon so that that won't happen. So I'm learning a lot. The force of that J-tube will suck your paper up the pipe and then it will cause obstructions. And so, um, lots to learn. It isn't, I mean, you have a learner's curve anytime you have a new wood stove. They are all going to work differently in your conditions, depending on what kind of pipe you use, 
uh, how much space you have in your house, what, what kind of wood you have, how dry the wood is, um, depending on how cold it is outside. All these things matter when you are working with the wood stove. So when you have a new wood stove, you have a whole different set of parameters to learn from. And a rocket mass heater is a completely different new type of wood burning stove. I mean, it's, it's totally different from um, a regular wood stove in that you have some difference in turns and and everything inside those pipes and you have actual suction of air and you have um, uh, wood gasification happening and and so um, even Paul Wheaton when he put his stove in they found that it was so hot and and pulled so well that it was actually sucking the flame off of the wood and so they had to slow the rocket mass heater down in order for it to work and not burn too hot and so for us, I don't think that's our problem. I think, and Darwin thinks that a lot of our problem is that we have cold air on the outside, warm air on the inside, and um, I'm not sure what he's thinking he's going to do. Earlier we were talking about putting a valve in so that it could, it could either go directly from the stove out, and then you could turn the valve, and that would deflect the heat down into the bench. Um... Um, we do have an awful lot of, of square angles, though, of 90 degree angles that that smoke is having to go around. And so we might tip the pipe so that it's, it's cutting off all the square angles and just coming in at an angle into the stove without, this, without that angle. So as you can see, that's why I'm kind of thinking that maybe the stove is going to end up at Darwin's once we leave because we are still really trying to leave early. We miss our dad and... Um, we have other videos to make in Oklahoma, and as much as we think the rocket mass heater is fantastic, I don't think it's worth staying home from Oklahoma to wait and get all the kinks worked out. So we might just leave that up to Darwin. Um, but we do know the refractory mix worked. The air, the air crate totally worked in the heat riser, and that is super exciting because it was the difference between a 150 or 200 pound heat riser and an eight pound heat riser, which is amazing. For a tiny house, you really want to minimize your weight. So um, make sure to go check out their channel, Honeydew Carpenter, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, so I totally forgot to mention, sorry, I'm totally backlit, but sometimes it seems like it would be nice to show you the rest of the cabin instead of just the living room. Let's see if I can figure out how not to be backlit so I can show you my cute kitchen. Um, so the book that Darwin used to find the ratios and the size that everything had to be to, to work right for the um, stove. He started out with the book by Erica and Ernie Wisner, um, their rocket mass heater building book. And so I have the link below. Make sure to go check them out and make sure to go check out the forums at permies.com in order to see what other people are doing. And Paul Wheaton did just do the jamboree up there where they did uh, batch boxes and things like that for tiny houses and renovated their stoves that previously were not working as well so they took the science of the rocket mass heater and applied it to stoves that were made by beginners years ago that didn't really work so they took the science of the rocket mass heater applied it to these um old stoves and now they work fantastically so make sure to go check out uh, permies.com and richsoil.com and we'll talk to you later